Hello, my name is Reverend Jason Grimsey from the Caboolture Region Uniting Church, which incorporates our three worship centres up at Beachmere, Caboolture and Upper Caboolture. And on behalf of our church family, we'd like to extend a warm welcome uh, to you all. And especially when we can't uh, worship within our worship centres because uh, of our COVID lockdown, we'd like to bring the service today from my humble home here at Burpingary. So sit back and enjoy and may our try and God just be with you during the service, you know, you know through the Bible reading, songs and sermon and through the liturgy today. Peace and joy. Come believing in the Christ, the one who is the bread of life and who draws us into God's presence. It is both captivating and frightening to be before our Creator, before the sovereign ruler of the universe. God knows everything we do and is aware of all our thoughts. Those who trust God shall know life eternal, even in the midst of this world. The Holy Spirit moves among us and within us, teaching us the way we should go. May the Holy Spirit move us during our time of worship and praise today.
God of the bitter and the tender hearted, open us your word of life that we may see and understand ourselves in the stories of your children long ago. Save us from the judgment we deserve and feed us with the bread of life. Let us hear again of your steadfast love, for we put our trust in you. Amen. when digging some holes in the garden. I know, like, how much dirt can one put around? He's so obsessed with driving out this next trail. Yeah, and then he sticks his head out the window with his tongue flopping in the wind. What? 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 Anyway, he hogs all the hot water in the shower. Oh, yeah, and then why does he have to shake himself before applying the tap? And then he needs to run away every time I need him. At least he can always come back with the sticker of all. And why does he keep on scratching himself all the time, like he's got head lice? It must be fleas. Have you considered taking him to the vet for a treatment? Hmm. Hmm. Um, I, I feel some people think he's dividing the flock. No way. I reckon he's rounding up the flock in his DNA. Hang on. Are we on the same page? What do you mean? Who are you referring to? Who are you referring to? Um, I'm talking about him. Who are you talking to? Oh, we are definitely not on the same page. All this time, I thought you were referring to him. Just sit, sit, sit. <laughs> well, I'm glad we got that cleared up. Yes, me too. Mind you, I still think there are times when he acts like a dog. Oh, I agree. And there are times when he thinks he is God. <laughs> Young kids and big kids, 
I'm sure there are times in the schoolyard or at family gatherings or even at church when we complain or we say nasty things or even gossip about others. Sometimes that other person is someone we know very well. Today, we will hear Paul's words that he wrote to a new church where he tells them and us that we should act like Christians and act like Jesus and hold back from saying unkind or harsh words about others. Whenever we feel angry or furious, Paul tells us to take a deep breath and be kind and forgiving to each other. What is important is that we do not let the anger build up in us, but we try to sort it or resolve it that particular day. It is when we stay angry day after day after day that Paul warns us that we will eventually sin by responding with unkind and unpleasant words that causes more grief or anger with each other. Again and again, we assault God's design for human society with our own self-centered schemes and desires. We need to repent and realize forgiveness, for we cannot turn away from evil without God's help. Let us pray. O trying God, we confess that our plans for ourselves ignore the needs of many of our sisters and brothers. We try to shut out the larger world that does not fit our comfortable design. We are angry when called to account and bitter when our circumstances do not work out to our advantage. We are quick to see the sin of others and slow to recognize the sin within. Keep us from throwing stones, God and protect us from the missiles that others throw back at us. Forgive our obsession with the minor concerns amid the major complications of life. Lead us, so we may imitate your ways and crave and desire to walk in your love. Through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. God does not condemn us but meets us in Jesus Christ with the words, Go and do not sin again. Whoever believes has eternal life. Now go forth and forgive one another as God has forgiven you. Amen. Jesus, take me as I am. I can come no other way Take me deeper into you Make my flesh life melt away Make me like a precious stone Crystal clear and finely The Bible reading comes from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 to chapter 5, verse 2. Instructions for Christian living. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are full of greed. That, however, is not the way of life you learned when you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught, with regard to your former way of life, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self 
created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbour, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This week we are reflecting on Paul's letter to the church of Ephesus. And the section which is titled Instructions for Christian Living, or sometimes called Living as Children of Light. Before we consider this notion of living like Christ, how about we start with the idea of children living like or imitating their parents? If you are a parent, can you think of a good trait or characteristic that your children have copied from you or what you believe may have been genetically passed on to your siblings? If you do not have any children, vice versa, can you think of any good traits or characteristics that you have copied from your parents or even your guardians? For me, as a parent, I have a bit of a chuckle whenever my sons pull on a comical face in our family photos or when they photobomb in the background because I too was that young boy who would be the comic who would bring a smile or a laugh when people saw my family photos. This is somewhat pleasing and satisfying feeling when children copy the good characteristics of their parents. On the flip side, there is a somewhat mm, despondent and sometimes painful feeling when children do not copy the good characteristics of their parents. This week during the lockdown, my kids had to perform their schoolwork from the schedules provided on their school websites. My wife was somewhat discouraged that our daughter is so diligent to get in and perform her schoolwork or assignments, just like my wife when she was growing up, but our sons procrastinate in doing their schoolwork and assignments. And it's a chore to get them off their computer games and getting them to con concentrate in doing their work. I have no idea where they get this attitude. It is a complete mystery. Hmm. Paul's letter to the Ephesians has a different purpose to the letter to the Colossians. In our series last month, Paul was insisting that the church of Coloss just grow and build up with Jesus and not get caught up in the heresies that were bombarding their church. Paul's letter to the church of Ephesus is a letter of encouragement. It commences with the meaning of unity and being alive in Christ. And for me, it climaxes with the reminder in chapter 5, verse 8, For you were once in darkness... But now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. 
What does it mean to live as children of the light? In today's passage, Paul is encouraging the church then and now not to do a couple things, not to lie, not to bot up your anger, and don't talk perversively. Sometimes when we read these passages, we might sigh with, oh, here we go again. More commandments, more rules. However, we need to understand the why. Really, what is the problem, Paul, with a once-off lie or containing your anger or talking dominantly or swearing? Lying is problematic and is a hindrance because it disrupts unity by creating conflict and eroding trust. In a community like a family or even the church, lies can break down relationships and open new or previous wounds. We can't just keep silent either and just button up our lips. Because they're sometimes not saying something when we should, especially in the times of injustice, we are being dishonest and lying to ourselves. Hmm. Disruption, creating conflict, and eroding trust is the opposite of unity, peace, and building trust. Bottling up our anger is problematic. For the longer we feel anger and re resentment, the more time Satan has to start up his blowtorch and apply the heat to the matter within. As many of us know, heat and matter generally expands and anger can expand to a point, boom, it's too, it too breaks and destroys relationships. Are we angry with anyone right now? Paul recommends that we don't let the day close without mending this relationship. Hmm. Breaking and destroying is the opposite of repairing and restoring. Hmm. Talking perversively is problematic because all the obscenity, the foolish or confining advice or the coarse language and joking can oppress, it can neglect and it can segregate people. Hmm. Hang on a sec. Oppression, neglect and segregation are the opposite of exalting care and congregation. At the beginning of this passage, Paul counsels the church that some people will not grasp the gospel. Since their futile, perverted and inflated pride thinking is away from God, they will think and they will act and they will respond with lies, bottled anger and perverted talk, which brings disruption, conflict, destruction, oppression, etc. that we just named before. Did you know that there was a time where Mark Twain became hostile to the Bible and the Christian faith because of church leaders? As he grew up, he knew the elders and the deacons who owned slaves and abused them. He heard men using foul language and saw them practice dishonestly during the week after speaking piously in the church on a Sunday. He listened to ministers use the Bible 
just to justify slavery. Although he saw the genuine love for the Lord Jesus in some people, including his mother and also his wife, he was disturbed by the bad teaching and poor example of church leaders that he became bitter towards the things of God. Notice I didn't say Mark was bitter with God. Mark was bitter towards the things of God. His church, who failed to grasp the gospel. One of the key verses for me is in verse 30. For when I first read it, it seemed like Paul was telling the church do not feel sorry or grieve or feel like you're surrendering when we restrain ourselves and we respond with the Holy Spirit in kindness and compassion and forgiveness. It's more than this. Paul is pleading to the Holy Spirit, do not grieve. As we have identified earlier, the effects of lying, contained anger, perverted talk, and even stealing are the total opposite effects of the good and divine work of the Holy Spirit. As I mentioned in the beginning, there is something pleasing and satisfying when children copy the good characteristics of their parents. Paul finishes his passage with a very similar view. Dearly loved children of the light, follow God's example and walk in the way of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and a sacrifice to God. Restrain and not complain in lies. Restrain and not complain with bottled anger. Restrain and not complain with perverted talk. Children of light, restrain and not complain when we respond with the kindness, compassion and forgiveness of Christ through our Holy Spirit. For they bring unity peace and trust, repairing and restoring lives, and a cared and exalted congregation. As we live this week, like the Ephesians, and Paul's advice to us is restrain and not complain. Through
O mighty triune God, Father Creator, Lord Jesus, and Holy Spirit, you taught us to love our neighbour and care for those in need as if we were caring for you. In this time of COVID lockdown here in South East Queensland, we seek your compassion during this time of isolation, anxiety and darkness. We pray and yearn for your care on those who are ill or in pain, knowing that when danger approaches, your loving arms are there to hold them safe and restoring them in health and strength. We pray and yearn for your care on all hospital staff who care for the sick, plus the medical researchers who seek your wisdom in searching for a cure. May your spirit strengthen them during these times of stress and fatigue. We pray and yearn for your care on your church, our Christian community. Each day remind us of your love, your direction and your mission in this world. We are not a people of fear, but a people of courage. We are not a people of greed, but we are a people of generosity. We are not a people who protect our safety, but we protect the safety of our neighbours. You are our God who gives and loves, no matter the cost. We are your people and your servants in this lockdown who gives and loves whatever it costs. Be with us, Lord, in all our prayers, all our words and all our actions during this time. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As recipients of the bread of life, we offer bread to the hungry. For the gift of living water, we reach out to those who are thirsty. In the name of Jesus, the one who shared his body, but also put his life itself on the line for justice, truth, and holy living, we gladly dedicate our time, our talent, and our treasure. Draw us near to you as we imitate your generosity and your grace. Amen. By your hands may love be shared. By your voice may peace be spoken. By your eyes may beauty be seen. By your ears may truth be heard. By your life may the testimony of Christ be revealed. Amen. Thank you.